Now I'm loving the fact that in 2024, the days of the budget 4 core i5 and even i7 are no more. No, we are graced by the budget gaming gods with cores, lots of cores. X79 and even now X99 has become so cheap that it's basically being given away. Now it always blows my mind, uh, but this E52689 8 core 16 thread X79 CPU cost me 82 pence. Yes, 82 pence. Add a little shipping and I'm about three pound down. That's to fly this halfway around the world, delivered to my door as well, courtesy of AliExpress. So let's see what this little chip can do. I can't wait. My name's Andy, and this is Andy's Tech. Yes, we're back today on Xeons, in the X79 flavour in particular. Okay, slight clickbait, apologies, but this CPU did cost me 82 pence before shipping, and that's good enough for me. So what did my 82p buy me? Well, it's a Sandy Bridge chip with 8 cores, 16 threads, 2.6 GHz base clock with an all-core boost of 3.2 GHz. There's a 150W TDP, 20 megabytes of level 3 cache, and this cost $1,552 new. Yes, that's right, $1,552. Madness. I want to take a closer look at some X79 and X99 chips as I believe these offer the best way into budget PC gaming at the moment and they can't really be beaten in my opinion. Now we are working with an older platform here so everything is taken into consideration. Yes, you can go and buy a new i5-12400F or Ryzen 7500F and yes, it will be better, but we're talking about low end here and budget gaming, so i7-4770, i7-3770 territory and in my opinion, there's just no contest. X99 is going to be the better bet in 2024 as it offers a few more features over X79 but that doesn't mean that X79 still doesn't have a place and this little chip can hold its own at this end of the market. Plus what else can you buy for a pound? Uh, the test system today is going to be my trusty unnameable AliExpress X79 motherboard. Yes this board is still working nearly a year on and if you missed the video I'll put a link up now. There are so many options on AliExpress, but generally go for a board with a few reviews to back it up if you're looking for something similar. To be honest, it's worth buying one just to play around with as I have a lot of fun with these old chips. You can get this CPU comboed in with RAM and a motherboard for about £35, which is just crazy in my opinion. I've got 32GB of DDR3 clocked at 1866MHz running in quad channel, another great feature of going with a platform like this over your standard lineup. Uh, but please do be aware some of the cheaper boards use uh, H61 or H75 chipsets and these do only support uh, dual channel memory. Uh, I'm going to pair this all today with an RTX 306012 12GB. Uh, a little present I brought for myself and for the channel. Uh, it's the most popular GPU on Steam at the moment and it's getting cheaper by the day. And really, you're never going to pair anything higher with an X79 CPU. Plus, we're a budget gaming channel. I mean, really, the 3060 isn't even a 1080p high settings card in 2024 in some of the latest titles. Uh, we're not going to be using any upscaling technologies today, so it's raw native performance. Uh, I was honestly really surprised with the performance of this chip for the money it cost. Don't believe me? Let's roll the benchmarks. First up, we have CS2, the uh, latest reincarnation of the Counter-Strike franchise. Now, this does like strong cores on the CPU, and our little E5 Xeon isn't doing the best here today. Uh, it's not really utilising the CPU very much. Uh, really, we're only using about two cores to their full potential. Uh, the 3060 is uh, just taking a stroll in the park at about 45% usage. Now, I did expect to see a slightly better result here. Uh, I went for medium settings in the end. Uh, I did try high settings, but it didn't seem to make 
any difference really so really we are just cpu limited here uh, but that said we still achieved an average of 98 fps with one percent of 56 and 0.1 percent of 34 turning everything down to the absolute lowest and using some fsr did improve things slightly uh, we were seeing averages of about 140 fps uh, then but we're testing it with native today uh, so counter-strike 2 yeah you could get away with playing it on a cheap little xeon like this but really all you can expect here is a casual experience uh, i wouldn't say it is a competitive experience but considering the cost of the xeon and the architecture uh, i would say it's actually a pretty good result so let's move on to something a little more demanding and that is fortnite now really since the unreal engine 5 update fortnite is almost virgin uh, on the realms of a triple a title in terms of demanding us to run especially when you turn the settings up uh, we've gone for 1080p medium settings here today with 100 percent resolution scale and tsr set to low just to make use a little bit of the rtx 3060 plus i believe this offers a good balance between uh, performance and visual quality Certainly no complaints here for Fortnite, which can be uh, a bit of a stuttery mess. Uh, certainly the extra cores are helping us along here uh, over a sort of four core, eight thread counterpart chip. Uh, we achieved an average of 95 FPS with 1% 1 of 65, 0.1% of 43. Uh, again, really, you could make use of upscaling technologies here and lowering the settings to uh, competitive, which is 1080p low. It's also worth noting the view distance was set to epic as well. Uh, but really, for Fortnite, um, again, considering the cost of the chip, I was really surprised here. Uh, I was expecting the 1% to be uh, a, lot, a lot worse than they were. So I could recommend this if you wanted to put together a little cheap PC for Fortnite. Uh, this CPU would certainly do the job and it would uh, certainly get you off the ground. So another FPS title next, and that is COD or Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, I should call it, and uh, probably the only FPS title I'm actually any good at. Now, we were able to fully utilize our RTX 3060 here. Uh, the Xeon was able to let that max itself out at 99% usage. Uh, we had a really respectable result here today with uh, an average FPS of 101, with 1% 1 of 76 and 0.1% of 34. Uh, the settings I used were 1080p balanced with high textures, which is basically a mix between medium and high, and it does offer some good visual quality. Again, if you wanted to up those uh, FPS figures to more near that 120 or 144 FPS, a target that people like to use for their high refresh rate monitors you could certainly make use of some dlss or some fsr if you have those options available in your graphics card something like a 2060 here as well would be an absolute brilliant pairing with this little chip and a really good result so now we've got our lighter to run titles out the way uh, let's move on to something a little more demanding and that is cyberpunk uh, 1080p medium settings here I ran the in-game benchmark as it gives a pretty good comparison between uh, the actual gameplay and it's easier to uh, replicate. Uh, we achieved an average of 88 FPS, 1% of 66 and 0.1% of 53. Uh, the little Xeon today had no trouble really uh, playing Cyberpunk. Uh, the RTX 3060 was basically fully utilised as well, hovering around 95 to 99%. So if you wanted to play Cyberpunk, uh, I mean this was the first sort of title that killed the 4-core 8-thread CPU. And uh, But yeah, no problem today with our little Xeon. Uh, next up, and not really a demanding title as the benchmark will prove, and that is F1 2023, 1080p high settings, and we absolutely smashed it here with an average of 150 FPS, 1% 1 of 107, and 0.1% 1 of 74, a completely buttery smooth experience. Uh, if you look at the frame time graph as well, uh, it's straight as a die. So there are optimised titles out there and when you compare it to something like Forza Motorsport, uh, that's a pretty demanding game. I mean, not much going on here, but it is a pretty looking game, you know. So if you want to play something like this, you'll have an amazing time. 
The Last of Us up next, 1080p medium settings and still one of my favourite titles almost a year and a half on. Honestly, this is a great game and if you get a chance to play it, it's uh, well recommended. It is, however, quite taxing on CPUs and GPUs, to be honest, as it's a pretty demanding next-gen AAA title or remastered title, should I say. But no problems here today. An average of 68 FPS, 1% to 48, and the percentiles were respectable at 29. I would say this is a passable experience, in my opinion. Uh, there are areas of the game where this will draw uh, but I like to test this area as it offers a variety of gameplay you will experience throughout the whole game. Uh, it's certainly worth playing through if you can, like I just previously said. I mean, the Xbox plays this at 30 FPS, so we're on to a winner here considering the CPU cost 82p. Uh, the RTX 3060 isn't quite being utilised, so there is a CPU bottleneck here in this title, but I'm not complaining. So last up we have the uh, mess that is Starfield, not only is it absolutely brutal on CPUs, uh, it's absolutely brutal on GPUs as well. We're running at 1080p medium settings and I mean the RTX 3060 is a £280 graphics card new. And uh, yeah, we're not even achieving an average of 60 FPS here. I mean, it is down to the architecture. We're running an old CPU, you know, but the Xeon's putting up a good fight. Average 48, 1% 30, 0.1% free. But I'll tell you what, it's doing a hell of a lot better than a 4-core, 8-thread, 4th Gen i7 will. And on that note, that'll bring us to the conclusion and the end of the video. Uh, but I'm actually getting ahead of myself here. I did run some synthetic benchmarks. Uh, 3D Marks Time Spy returned with a score of 7,937 with a CPU score of 5,905 and a graphics score of 8,451. So you can use that to compare it against your system if you wish. Cinebench R20 returned a score of 2,195, which is pretty respectable to be fair, uh, considering the cost of this CPU and the age of it. Uh, but yeah, as I said, that will bring us to the end of the video. Now, is something like this recommended for a first time setup or as a budget game or something to get into PC gaming uh, for the price that it costs? Uh, yes. Yes, I would say so. You know, I can recommend it. I mean, the benchmarks kind of speak for themselves. I mean, with a CPU like this and an architecture X79 in particular, like I said before, everything has to be taken into consideration. It is an old platform. There are limited upgrade options. You're kind of getting what you're getting with it and that's it. Obviously, it's DDR3. Uh, something like X79 is a better platform and uh, you can get onto that platform for a little bit more money, not a lot. And obviously, you have DDR4 RAM as well. But I mean, you can buy a cheap combo with the CPU for about £30, £35 in the UK delivered to your door. You can run ECC memory with it, which is super cheap. And you can pair up to sort of a 30, 60, 12 gigabyte and you will get respectable frame rates. I mean, apart from Starfield, which does require more modern hardware really to run properly. We were achieving a plus 60 uh, FPS average in all the titles tested today. I mean, really, you could pair this CPU with uh, any GPU from the like last 10 years that's relevant, you know, RX 580, 8GB, 1660 Super, TI, 1070, 1080, you know, you name it. Um, I mean, you might even get away with a 3060 Ti, but then really, who's going to buy a 3060 Ti and have this combo? So anyway, let me know what you think about the CPU. Like I said, I am going to be testing some more Xeons to kind of compare them against each other. Some Haswell Xeons and some Broadwell Xeons. Uh, as you can tell, I do love these little chips. They're brilliant fun. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching as always. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you for all the support. God bless. Take care and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.